Good morning, folks. I just come in and I had my barn coat on, a different hat, and I got wet out there. That that snow is not a sticky snow like they said it was going to be. They said it was going to be heavy and sticky. No, it's just as fluffy as can be out there. I opened the door this morning. It was met with a two-foot drift right in front of the door, so I had to reach out and grab my shovel and keep the door wide open so I could shovel to step out on the deck. Made my way to the birds, decided that uh, where the snow was fluffy, I wasn't going to shovel. I will keep the, the egresses, the front and back door shoveled, but I won't shovel out around the outbuildings until the storm <clears throat> has stopped. Because when I walk out to the coops, uh, I walk through the snow, I trudge through the snow, and some of the drifts are up almost to my knees. And by the time I got done doing my chore duty and it was coming back to the house and that same trek I just took going out to the coop, uh, you could barely see my, my snow track. So the wind is blowing, the wind is cold at 18 degrees. I don't know what the, the wind chill is, but this hand here, because I had frostbite years ago, this hand got cold. The fingers just were just sharp, sharp hurt. So if you look behind me over here, you see two stock pots on the stove. One is the big one. I keep hot water on it at all times. Anytime there's a, there's a fire going in the wood stove, so all winter long. But the other stock pot, the one that's dancing over there, that's jiggling. Yeah, I found that stock pot the other day when I was shoveling. Found it right under the eaves. My shovel hit it, and I'm like, what the hell was that? So I, you know, took my glove and my hand and cleared it away, and I found the stainless steel pot where I had set it under the eaves, right full of ice. So anybody that's ever goofed up like I just did knows that if you set a pot outside with something in it and it freezes, we get a really cold, cold spell. That'll bow that, that bottom of that pot right down. It'll just bow it right out. You take a, a gallon of water and you freeze it. You know how it bulges because ice expands and it, it rounds the bottom so the water jug no longer sits straight. Well, the same thing happens to aluminum. So, the pot is still good. The pot is still good. You know, it doesn't leak. It, you know, the cover was inside. So, you know, I mean, the pot is still good. It's just going to rock back and forth because it's not flat anymore. I knew better. I knew better. So, if that's distracting you, I'm sorry. But I'm still going to use it. I'm still going to use it. So, because I had to shovel and keep the door open. Uh, it's a little cool in here. It's down to like 59 degrees. And so I'm sitting here by the fire, looking out my big windows at the snow. And I got thinking, you know, if, if, if there was a disaster of any kind and there was no access, the radios didn't work, the TVs didn't work, whatever, whatever reason, for whatever reason, how would you know that there was going to be a, a storm coming? How would you, how would you know anything was coming? So, you know, some of us who have arthritis, we can feel it in our joints when, when there's a storm coming. But I think sometimes we can smell rain coming. We can, we can feel it. Those of us who have been outside or or whatnot for a long period of time, you know what storm feels like on your face. Uh, so if you didn't have a radio, you didn't have any communication outside, how would you know that there was a storm coming? Whether it was a snowstorm, a nor'easter, a windstorm, a rainstorm, a hurricane, how would you know? How would you know? Well, the animals outside, the wild animals outside, 
know when something when something is coming. That that's their survival. They will they will eat more before the storm. The predators will be more active during a storm. Birds of prey. The owl. The owl. That owl was very hungry. Uh, and I understand they have to eat. They have to eat too. I understand that. But let's take the owl for example. The owl probably knew the storm was coming. It, it just it had an instinct. It had it had something in its in its survival mode that knew that it had to eat before the storm came. Now that's the same with foxes, coyotes, any any predator out there can sense that there's a storm coming so they will eat as much as they can they'll try to find food so then they can hunker down in the storm and then come out when it's over and resume their activities so one way to do that is to watch the animals now before radio and tv i'm sure the old timers knew when there was a storm coming they just had that that survival instinct more so than we have today because we just rely on we don't pay attention we just rely on the weather stations the weather, weather radio we just rely on somebody else to tell us that there's a storm coming but if we didn't have that we would also hone in those survival skills we would learn to pay attention yeah we would we would learn to pay attention we might not know how cold it will be in degrees we might not know how many inches of snow or rain or the wind speed we might not know all that but we would know that there is something coming for a storm so us humans modern technology has made us pretty lazy made us not pay attention we're just going to rely on somebody else to do all the hard work and then tell us what we need to prepare for so that's no different than than stocking up food storing food away uh, Prepping. There's no difference in that and prepping. You you get ready for what may happen. You get ready for what may come for a storm at any time. You just prepare for that. Now I didn't prepare for because I listened to the weatherman. The weatherman. I didn't. I didn't hear that it was supposed to be windy with this storm. So I just assumed that you know. The snow was just going to be wet and heavy, and it's just going to drop straight to the ground. Well, it turned out to be fluffy, so any breeze at all is going to blow that snow. So I didn't prepare for that. You know, I filled the 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 food dishes up in the the food coop, their their food station. I filled that up, so all I could do is open the doors and bring the water out for the birds, and they can go in the, their food station and eat. Well, that didn't happen, so I had to bring the, excuse me, I had to bring the food, excuse me, into the coops, and lock, and the water, and feed them in there. So, excuse me, in today's world, we, we get mad at the weatherman, the weatherman always get it wrong, well, the weatherman got it wrong again. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing to figure out the weather? Are you just relying on them and then complaining when they get it wrong? Are you just going to complain when they get it wrong? What have you done to figure out the weather for what's coming? What have you prepared? You know, if the weatherman says this and they get it wrong and then, then you plan for what the weatherman said and then you're mad at the weatherman, well, you did nothing. It's easy to rely on somebody else to give you the information, but when they're wrong, you know, so you got to, we, me, you, everybody, we've got to pay more attention. We've got to prepare for whatever scenario, whatever scenario, we've just got to plan on that. We just can't say, okay, well, he's an expert. He gets paid good money to tell us the accurate weather. Mother Nature sometimes has, you know, a different story. But we've all got to do our part. We can't rely on one person. We can't rely on the weatherman. And then we can't blame him when he's wrong. 
and us not do anything to help figure it out as well on our end.